game still to come. Singular at the half. Continue. Singular at the half. Sponsored by Singular. Raising the bar. Hi, everyone. Welcome once again to our CBS studios here in New York, the Singular at the Half. I'm Greg Gumbel, along with Clark Kellogg and Seth Davis. And uh, the game that's taking place in Austin right now between Michigan State and Duke, 32 all at halftime. They are coming to the end of their halftime break, and as soon as action resumes, we will take you there to join it live. Meanwhile, in the game you're watching, North Carolina State leading Wisconsin by a score of 30 to 21. The Badgers in double-figure turnovers. Yeah. If they had retained the ball for half of that time, and scored, they're right up there with the Wolfpack. Uncharacteristically sloppy with the basketball in that first half, but they are only down nine despite all the turnovers and not getting high-quality shots, so it's a three-possession game. They have to feel good. That's the consolation they take, even though they played very poorly, not only offensively, but defensively, a lot of careless fouls as well. How about the Wolfpack three-pointers? Well, that's something that gives you a lead in a hurry. They knocked down a bunch of threes. They made ten field goals, Greg, in the first half. Six of them were from behind the arc. One foul, I think, is huge. All right, guys, that game is now underway in the second half. Michigan State and Duke. Let's take you there live. Jim Nance and Billy Packer. We've just started the second half. First possession, Spartans, and that was for the lead. Michigan State tallying the last six points of the first half to tie it at 32. Duke led almost the entire first half. The biggest margin was, in fact, six. But it's, again, another slow night for J.J. Redick to this point. He's missed his last four from the field. Now launching a three in front of the rim. He'll follow. Good pick up by Ager. And let's take a look at our halftime stats brought to you by Lexus. And look at the field goal percentage. Duke uh, held them down under 40%, Billy, but there's that. Yeah. And, and also right here, 12 turnovers. And Jim, when you take a look at who made the turnovers, Ewing had three, Dockery had four. So the key backcourt components, seven turnovers. It's Ewing, jump shot. Rattles out, and it's Anderson with the rebound. That last foul was on Ager. And that was his second. There's the shot pulled down by Sheldon Williams. And I might add, official scores have Sheldon Williams with only one foul. One time, it looked like they had him for two. But just one on the big man inside for Dukes. Having another strong performance, leading the Devils with 13. Now, bullying his way in and heading back to the line for a couple. Now, right before the half, if you missed it, the game was tied 32. Duke inbounding. And watch how the clock does not start. And then a turnover. Allen Anderson thought about launching it, sees he's got time, lays it in inside of a second. What looked like for a moment maybe the lead going to the locker room, but they took the basket away after reviewing it on the replay and the right call. That's the second foul, by the way, on Davis a moment ago. Jim, you are right. It, it is the right call. And isn't it interesting how that has been put into play by the rules committee to go over and check at the end of half and end the ball game for fairness for both teams. So, uh, Good piece of officiating. Sheldon Williams, the most interesting look to that free throw style. Kind of a sidewinder going in there. Side spin, but he nets two, and Duke's back in front. Marcus Nelson on Neitzel. You see Shav Randolph out high for the Blue Devils. He picked up his second foul with 11 minutes to go in the half and then set the final 11 minutes. From the corner, that's a three. And that, again, would have been for the lead for the Spartans. Pass, dangerous out, high, and it's Ewing slamming it in for the basket. Jim, remember one of the first plays of this ball game when Ewing went up and stopped the lob past the Brown? There again, he goes right over the top of Neitzel. Tremendous leaping ability. That's the first basket by the Blue Devils in six minutes, going back to the first half. Ager. Drives in, comes up short. Didn't finish, but Davis keeps it alive. Again, another dangerous pass out to Neitzel. Now, you don't want to throw that ball out long lobbing like that, because if it's picked off, it's an easy basket for your opponent. Like we saw a moment ago. Anderson, three, pure. Beautiful follow through by Anderson. And that time, Williams stepped out much too far away from the basket. You know Neitzel's not going to take the long jump shot. That's the first three of the night to drop for the Spartans. They're one out of eight 
from behind the arc now and a turnover the 13th of the game by Duke well Duke has got to get the ball out of Nelson's hands he is not the guy to initiate the offense he's a finisher not a starter CBS Sports Line puts you on the court for this year's men's tournament get up to the minute scoring and streaming video highlights for each regional semifinal game CBS Sports Line com Chris Hill now running the controls here as he checks in for the Spartans basket would give them their first lead of the night and Ewing comes over to help out and 19 on the shot clock Davis may have gotten poked in the eye he did that was good help from the weak side by Ewing coming over because Davis was in pretty good low post position that time on Williams And Brown and Michigan State with the three leads for the first time tonight. Boy, Michigan State's doing a great job defensively that wherever Reddick goes, even on transition, they find him. So he's never open on the wing as he is normally when he gets off a lot of three-point shots. They kind of like have a radar on him. And again, they can, no matter whether they switch or the original man, there's a great steal. Look at Brown take it away from Ewing. He's a good finisher. And he does indeed finish. And Michigan State ahead by four. Mike Krzyzewski cannot like the way his team has handled the ball on the perimeter in this ballgame. They come out of the locker room. They take the lead, and they tell Duke, we are so into this tonight. Craig Gumbel in New York to update the action down in Austin, Texas. Michigan State on fire now. Shannon Brown with the steal and the bucket to cap an 8-0 run. The Spartans have grabbed a 40-36 lead on Duke. We'll get you back to Syracuse. Vern Lundquist and Bill Rath. To inbound down. Just give minutes and then pick up a foul on Williams. Again, to clarify the second on Sheldon Williams. Here in Austin, later, it'll be Utah and Kentucky. They played here in the state of Texas back in 1998 in the championship game down the road, down I-35 in San Antonio. They meet for the sixth time in the NCAA since 1993. Neitzel's been doing a pretty good job with dribble penetration. He's taken some all, some all the way tonight. There he goes again. Yep, steps up and back of the rim. It's Melchioni. Now, Melchioni, I was about to get into this. He has had a couple of explosive halves late in the year at St. John's where he had 16 and a half. Against North Carolina, at Carolina, 15 and a half. And now as Coach K looks for a spark, Melchioni's with a rebound and a three here in the last minute. Ewing kind of taking over as he did against Mississippi State, taking that ball inside. It was not a good shot. So not a wise foul. Anderson's first. It'll put the co-captain of the Blue Devils and the winningest player in college basketball today at the line. A part of 115 career wins. Daniel Ewing. You know, Jim, Anderson has hit the two big threes. What's interesting about him in his career, in his first two years, and this is hard to believe the way he's shooting him tonight, he took only 18 threes and made six of them. Mm. So only 18 threes in two years. Tonight, taken two and hit both. Trannon and Ager go out for Michigan State as Davis returns. Just fresh bodies, and Tom Izzo over there banging both fists together, saying, I want body contact. This is a pair. Michigan State hitting three of its last four from three after missing the first seven in the game. And this man with a couple of them. Anderson, and that's a steal. Threw it right to Sheldon Williams. That's a wise move by Williams. He didn't realize at first that Brown was behind him. It's the kind of thing where you can hand the ball back and Michigan State just pick it right off. It was smart to hang on. Bogracus is in for Michigan State, and he is draped all over Reddick, following him. Ewing underneath. And it's Bogracus who dropped back down and made the steal. Up ahead to Davis. Whips it back out high. Anderson three. Oh. Yes! What did I say? Six for 18 over three years, and he's hit three in a row. He's had half 
half as many tonight as he had in two years of play at Michigan State. Forget tonight. How about just in this half? All three in this half by Anderson. Reddick kicks it out. Melchiona, can he do it again? Yes. Another three. Nice job that time by Reddick on the kick out. Melchione seems to be the one guy right now for Duke who has uh, created that spark. Jim, a little blood maybe on Sheldon Lee. Referee calling the time. Allen Anderson with 15 points, including three threes in this half. Sparking back to a five-point edge at 34-29. Now the jumper from Tucker. Rebound in the hand. You could hear Benerman say, I got it. Ebbs him off at the other end. Kicks it back out to Hodge. And Vernon won't just jack it up quickly. Look at his penetration by Benny. He does a nice job getting the rim, Cameron. Just off the back edge of the rim, Shambus finds Morley. Tucker wants it in the uh, low post. He's being fronted by Hodge. And there's that back screen to the other box, Wilkinson. Wilkinson pops back outside. Look at the rotation to the passing lane. Nice extra look. Hanson for three. That's great basketball. That's Badger basketball, too. Shambliss, unselfishly, the kid. Almost a touch pass by Sharif Shambliss. And a two-point game. Last time, the margin was two. It was 11 to 9. Offense, what a terrific job by Clayton Hanson. He does a wonderful job moving the feet, getting to the spot, and the ability of Hodge using the size to knock it down. Greg Umbel in New York, back to Austin in a moment after we show you what the Wisconsin Badgers have been up to. On a 12-4 run, Clayton Hanson, his second three of the second half. The Badgers didn't have a single three-pointer in the first half. They've hit three in the second half and pulled it within two of NC State. Let's get you back to Austin, Texas. Jim Nance and Billy Packard. Reddick with only five points, and Duke is down six. Jim, credit a lot of that to Tom Izzo's defense. He's switched different people on him, not giving him any good looks from the outside. Reddick may have found an answer on that last maneuver. Penetrate and kick out, become the playmaker instead of the primary shooter, because he's being guarded by one tough man, and they're picking him up whenever he makes penetration. Brown back out high, no one there. Oh, good play by Reddick. Ewing, Shields, follow up Melchione. Jim Melchione, as you pointed out, how many times has he given the big lift to this ball club? That time he did it with good hustle play. Normally it's the outside jumper. Well, he's doing it tonight. He has been the force in the second half to keep Duke in it. As Anderson gives it up, Ager gets the roll. Anderson having a terrific night. He realized that Sheldon Williams was waiting on him on that drive and gave it up. There you go. Two men on Reddick. As soon as he touches it, they double up and a steal again. State, tough pass. It got there. Oh. Oh. Wow. Ager, Brown, Hill, Anderson. Kind of interchangeable parts that Tom Izzo is using beautifully in this game. Michigan State now leads by eight. Reddick at last. A three. And Tom Izzo upset with Brown by not getting out there and forcing Reddick to put the ball on the floor with the dribble. Reddick's first basket in 17 minutes playing time. As we move inside of 10 minutes to go in the game. The five seed leads by five. Davis gets his own. Ball squirts loose, and they're going to whistle Sheldon Williams for his third. Wow, that was a How about bang. this pass, Billy? Yeah, but this is a beautiful pass and great catch. And we talked about how Brown can go up with anybody in the country. Former Mr. Illinois, Mr. Basketball. And Ager. That was Ager. Clean block. And Eftimov picks it up for North Carolina State. Oh, they got the push. Offense. Uh, Collins. Collins. 
Vote for your Pontiac game-changing performance of each round. Nearly $150,000 of scholarship contributions on the line. Take action and vote now at NCAAsports.com slash Pontiac. 34 all. Badgers, Hanson, in and out. Now they forced him to put it on the floor. It diminishes those spot-up shooters' effectiveness. And they're going to get Morley this time as he has Collins who are doing battle down there. Yeah, interesting. He, I thought he was too high in the post-up to go around the front. I thought he should have gone to the back. He's a very heady player, though. Third team foul. Both teams with three. Look at this pass. Ah. What a nice screen. Head him off. Unable to convert. Chambliss and Morley, Tucker, Hanson, and Wilkinson for the Badgers. And another chance to reclaim the lead, but denied by Collins. How about that? Right shoulder had been bothering him. No problem that trip. Now Hodge backs in. Here's Morley comes to help on the dribble. They kick it over to the right side. At sir for three. Well, that's what Hodge has been doing. You mentioned how quiet these bandies have. I mean, that's his fourth assist to solid distribution. And, Bill, each one of those assists has led to a three-point basket. Just to add a little to it. And they get Bennerman here. Nice job by Hanson letting the officials know. That's three fouls on Bennerman. So... Andrew Brackman on the bench with three. Bennerman's got his third. And no move by Herbie Sendak. Morley. Orlando Tucker. Long rebound. Ev Timah for North Carolina State. Julius Hodge. You've got to have a center that can make plays. And that's the big thing in this Princeton look. Edemoff is very good when he is the five man. 12 on the shot clock. He's got what he wants now. Oh, he had faked himself into a good spot. Got Wilkinson leaning and then uh, missed it. And here comes Wisconsin again. And Tucker posting up, taking advantage. They used to look to assist. Nice spin away from traffic, huh? Wow, drop step. Kipper! Alondo Tucker, the one game is won, 37-36. Tucker with 12 points. Hodge limited to five points by the fine defense of Clayton Hansen. Here's Hodge again, short with a shot. And Wilkinson with a rebound. And the Badgers with another chance. You can see how much more solid they're playing right now, Wisconsin. And State has not been able to match that play on the offensive end. Chambliss, Woo! Wisconsin leads. Wow, where was that? It was dormant in the first half. But for now, they got a little juice, a little hop in their step. First Wisconsin lead since it was 9-8. And at the other end, off the mark. Badger rebound. Good job by Wilkinson closing. Sharif Shambles with the three that gives them the lead. They're up by two with 11.03 to go. Now Tucker. Quick, quick step. Woo! Wow. wow. Get the lingerie off the deck, Fern. And look at this. They run into one another with the chest bump. I'd be out for the year. Shambles had the three to give the Badgers their first lead since the first five minutes. 41-37 field goal percentage. Both teams in the 40s now. Despite the 12 turnovers, they've only had one in this half, and that's been significant in this Badger run. It's a whole different look out there, uh, the change of attitude. Roy Williams and the North Carolina Tar Heels will take on Villanova. In the second game here in Syracuse, he's an interested spectator. The winner of that one meets the winner of this one. Knocked out of bounds. 41-37.
Badgers. Greg Gumbel in New York. Back to Austin in a moment after we update you on what's happening in Syracuse. Sharif Chambliss, a three-pointer for Wisconsin here. The Badgers on a 21-7 run to grab the lead. They lead North Carolina State 41-37, 10-45 to play in the second half. Back to Jim and Billy in Austin. Spartans never took the lead in this game until the second half, leading for the first time in the second half. And in fact, at one time, it was nine. It's six right now with just under eight minutes to play. Davis out of the ball game, getting a rest right now. Williams back in for Duke. Huge half for Anderson over Love. And it rattles out. Love swinging those arms. And Duke comes back trying to chip into that lead of Michigan State. It's Bagrakis on Reddick right now. If Reddick is going to get some shots, now is the time to get it. Williams. And that's a call against a call against Hill of Michigan State. I think it's going to be Trandon on the inside, Jim. I'm not sure. Could be on a reach. It is on Hill, and it's his second. You see the turnover difference here. Almost double the amount by Duke. And points off a of turnover is 10 points in a situation with a six-point lead, 10 of those coming on points off the turnovers. It's a big one-and-one one right here for the landlord, Sheldon Williams. First player ever to average a double-double for Mike Krzyzewski. You know, it's surprising. The last time that Duke had a player that led the league, the ACC, in rebounding. Let's go back to Mike Jaminski. <laughs> now Williams Mike. to cut it to four. Mike Jaminski, who was in a Final Four in 78. Yep. From nine to four with seven and a half to play. How long will Tom Izzo keep Davis out of the ball game here? Trying to give him that rest. Look at Love defending a little too closely, they say. Wrong guy to foul, too, in regard to Anderson. But it's not no, one-on-one. It's, on one. uh, it's not one-on-one one yet, nope. but Anderson is a guy, as I pointed out, this is a tremendous free-throw shooting team, so as you go down to the wire, it's and something that should play in their favor. That's Neitzel coming in, and Sunday night, 60 minutes. It may be the most grueling race in America, and the only one where a woman can beat the top men. Find out how on 60 minutes this Sunday. So that's the fifth team foul against Duke in this half. Two on Love. Davis back into the ball game. Anderson with three threes in this half. Drops it in low. And last touch by Duke. Good passing that time by Anderson. Hager, Brown, they're both guys that can really slash and catch the ball. Seven minutes to go. Davis in the lane. Puts it off the glass. Back to six. Ewing just couldn't get there in time on that pass. It was very well thrown. Looking for Reddick. Williams, go ahead. Yeah, nice defense by Davis. Yep. Ewing steps back. Jumper. Got it. Well, you can't ask Davis to do anything more. Williams had plenty of room. There was no double down, and Davis stopped him. Shannon Brown comes up short, gets a second chance, and Duke pulls it away with love. Break opportunity. Pull up three. Big shot. Reddick. No. Oh, oh Sheldon oh. Williams. How about the big man hustling full length of the floor? Tremendous job on his part. It cuts it to two. Watch this. They skipped right out of the basket, but the basket counts. They pulled down the rim, and the officials are talking about it for a minute, Billy, but it went through the cylinder. Well, let's take a look at that one. Williams, as I've talked about, committed to getting himself in an incredible condition. Watch this play. The ball goes up from Reddick. It is outside the cylinder. Williams puts it in. That's a basket. That's a basket. At what point is it the basket? At what point? It went it went through the, the, the rim. Okay. All, all the way through the rim. All the way through the rim. Just clarifying for the audience. And here you see Reddick pulling up. Down. He hangs on. That ball went below the cylinder. 
Watch it, watch it right here. And then it looked like the net is what threw it back up after it had been through. Tom Izzo with his head down. Does Mike Krzyzewski get another call? Just think the rim on the recoil, once Sheldon let go of it, just kind of batted the ball around and it kicked out. No basket, they're Whoa. calling it. They're calling it probably because now they're saying Williams and grabbing the rim, pulled the rim back up. Wow. Takes it away. This is huge. Six minutes to go, and it's a four-point game instead of a deuce. Well, Tom Izzo had his head down. Maybe he was praying. <laughs> but he got the call. Was it the right call? I think so. I think so. The more I saw as he pulled that rim down, and now Tom Izzo kind of smiling over there on some kind of a makeup. A foul call on Anderson. And that's his second. And Tom <laughs> does have kind of that smile. Like, I know what that was all about. <laughs> but two points will never get back up on the boards. There's a foul by Anderson on a push. Now well, Anderson with two quick ones gives him three overall. And again, back to the other end. And it's a double bonus the rest of the way for the Devils. Jim, you know, another thing that's kind of interesting about the Michigan State and Duke, remember Tom Izzo goes to the Final Four three straight years. 99. All right, and, and then, of course, in 2000, they won the, the, the national championship. Duke beat them in the semis. Remember that 62-68 game? Yep. St. Pete. And then that nightmare of a game that Tom Izzo had against Arizona in, in 01, where he got beat 61-80, to 80, a game that just nothing fell in place for him. But that was a, a team that no one really saw as a Final Four team. Not was I agree. not expected to be there, and then came out, got steamrolled in that, yeah, that was semifinal in 2001 in Minneapolis. Two Char shots. Charlie Bell's club. Torbett for Brown. Well, Tom Izzo had an opportunity to rest his starters, so they should be fresher than Duke. Duke's putting a lot of energy to make this comeback. Just got uh, word from the uh, scores table that the ruling was ball has to go completely through the basket to be counted, and they said it didn't do that. So, again, it's a two-point game. Michigan State with just under six to play. Davis, baseline, way outside. He'll follow it up. And on the way up, Ewing reached in. That's about the third time in this half Davis has been able to, on a missed shot, follow his shot. Not a good block out by Williams. Still not in the one and one. The next one will be. And Jim, you know what prevented that ball from going all the way through was Sheldon Williams grabbing the rim, and when he pulled the rim down, it snapped that net That's it. back the up recoil, and threw it, it back just, out. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, that ball was in and through. They say Davis was in the act of shooting, so a couple here. And again, this team that was second in the nation this year in free throw shooting, when they lost, it just doesn't add up. When they lost this year, they lost in a number of cases because they collapsed at the line at the end. A uh, Wisconsin game that we saw, and of course the big one, the Iowa game, where they were 15 from 30. They're 9 of 11 tonight from the line, and they lead by three. Which is more like their shooting abilities but we'll see what they'll do to down the stretch tonight in Austin Melchioni this could tie it three-point shot too strong and Sheldon Williams battling the call it on Williams and that was Ager who showed us the great dunk and now goes up against the Duke big man and steals a rebound and gets a foul and on Sheldon Williams that is his fourth he's coming out Chav Randolph will replace him at the 527 mark. Well, we remember the Kinetic game last year in the Final Four. Played 19 minutes, four points and six rebounds. Foul trouble plagued him. Four of Duke's six losses were games in which he played in a situation where he was in serious foul trouble. So he'll sit with the four. It's a one and one for Ager. Made some big plays in this half, like Anderson. And again, a missed crucial free throw. Tom Izzo talked about a missed one and one in the late stages at Cameron against this Duke team as they battled to the end and the Devils prevailed by seven back on November the 30th. Now the three could tie. Ewing looked to launch instead. Inside Shav, back out Ewing. Jumper, short. Into the arms of Anderson. 
Two straight empty trips for the Devils. And you notice how Michigan State doesn't help at all on Reddick. They stay right with him, so it's hard to kick it out. Torbert Sr., big shot, got it. One of his biggest. 4.46 to go, and it's back up to six. Torbert, one of those college players who's devoted so much time to improving his shot. In the last two years, he has been excellent. First two, he could not make that shot. Five threes by the Spartans all in this half. Reddick working hard and not able to finish. Needed the left-handed layup there, Jim. Did you notice that? Had the rim as his aid and didn't take advantage. He thought he was going to get fouled, and there was no contact. Neitzel stuck, and Randolph with the pilfer back to Duke. Drive. Ewing high off the glass. There was no help back in there because Davis was outside. Really didn't have to be because he was on Shavlik Randolph. Spartans up four with four to play. Timeout call by Michigan State. Nice job by Tom Izzo. Their team was not in sync as to what he wanted to do in the half court. Definitely come alive in the second half. This is Torbert long range for three for the Spartans who lead it by four. 64-60, 3.51 to play in the second half. Let's get you back to Syracuse and rejoin Vern Lundquist and Bill Raffer. 30,731 gathered here at the Carrier Dorm in Syracuse, North Carolina State, trailing by eight with exactly seven minutes to go. They were up by nine at the break. ACC seven and two with three teams left. The Big Ten eight and two with three teams left. Michigan State and Duke playing tonight, of course. Rick Patino. 7-0 in Sweet 16 games, and they go up against West Virginia tomorrow. Impressive, huh, those numbers? For oh, Tino. Uh, yes. And West Virginia with a great one. The game, Michigan State does exactly the right thing. They go to Davis down low with Shavlik Randolph behind him. Not the shot blocker that Sheldon Williams is. He's going to have to come back in the game. He's 3.34 to go. He's checking in, Billy. Reddick, just nothing there. Gives it up. Randolph driving in hard and fouled on the way up. Good idea by Randolph to try to take it right to the rim and cause the foul. Tom Izzo and his charges lead. Coach K and the Devils, 321 left. 13 points, Wilkinson in the lane, and they collapse on him, and a foul is called on Evtimov. Yeah, nice collective meeting there of red shirts. I tell you, he gets the ball and puts it on the floor, and there are three bodies on it. Well, that's uh, obviously you scout this team. That's one thing he does very well. And they want to give separation and let him do the damage. He's got two or three shirts around him. Mike Wilkinson, a graduate, agricultural business. Did you read the one story about the barn on the property that he really learned how to play? Right. Play the game. It's just playing with his dad, his That's brother. Like, a, like a, out of an old black and white movie, isn't it? Uh, it's one of the great American stories, I think. Blue Mounds, Wisconsin. Yeah. Mike uh, will get his graduate degree and head back to run the family for him. Four or four from the free throw line and 51-43 with 6.22 to go. Hodge is going to go shoot a couple of free throws. Uh, you hear the whistle. Uh, that's the intelligent thing to do. Let it up. And he's just taken off, taking advantage of the dribble. I would sit on his left hand, Vern, and force him the other way. Not that he can't do it, but guys have a preference. Zach Morley picks up his third. And Hodge back at the line. On call here. From the outside, Evkimov. Warming up the engine. 53-47, North Carolina State showing a little life. Look how they all go down to assist on the post. Everybody's got a hand in there. Betterman on Tucker, real good defender. Here's Shambus, good defense. Got rid of the ball and a foul away from the ball. School player of the year and just hoping his team can somehow Keep it together here with that lead. 321 to go. They're sending Randolph to the line to shoot two for Duke. Just a 53% free 
Foul shooter. Has not scored tonight. Does not get the roll. And Torbert going out of there is one of 4,000 point scores on this team, three of which are seniors. First time in school history they had 4,000 point scores on the roster at one time. But look at the rebound. Ager, and he called for traveling. So he came down with it. Let's check the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. Here it is, points in the paint, Michigan State. They've had so many second chances, Billy, that you could get complete NCAA tournament coverage, CBSSportsLine.com. Well, there, as I said, 13.5 rebound advantage over their opponents. Duke just 1.8, and Michigan State doing a great job, particularly on the offensive glass. Williams came back in during that break with the four, and that one rattles out. Good steal. Right back Ewing, steps back for the three. Huge shot. There's a senior that doesn't want to play his last game either, Jim. Particularly right here in his home state, where he played his last high school game. Can you imagine that? Not looking for any symmetry with that. No. So he slices the lead in half with 2.50 to go. Davis working it. Could that On be the, the force? And yes, that the is number counts. five, isn't it? It's going to be on Williams. It is Williams. Number five. Great job by Bogracus, another one of those seniors who understands the game. Gets it in, no double down. Williams gets caught in the air, which he very seldom does. Great job by Davis. Now, Duke will have to probably go small here, Jim, with 2.41 to go to put some pressure on the ball. They haven't had success with Shavlik Randolph out there against this quicker Michigan State team. Let's see if Mike Krzyzewski goes small and replacing Williams. Williams out with 19 points. And we'll see if Shavlik Randolph going back in. I guess Mike Krzyzewski figures he's got to have a matchup for Davis or they'll just go inside the rest of the way. Mike Krzyzewski using the full minute that he's allowed to replace a disqualified player. And again, Davis is going to go to the line. A chance to bring it right back to six. Williams did not make a field goal in the second half. He did, well, for a moment, appear to have one. But remember, <laughs> that one was erased from the books. All right, by him pulling on that rim, the ball never cleared the net. It cleared right under the cylinder, but it snapped right back out. Davis. Well, he missed them in Durham, but not missing them here. 69-63. Michigan State with 2.38 to play. If you're ready, you might as well keep the ball yourself. Try to beat for Gracchus. There he goes. Going in on him. Double up, and the ball is thrown away. No one there. Except Coach K. Well, he got it to the Duke leader, except it's not one in uniform. Bo Gracchus. Brings it out high. Neitzel is checked by Dockery, and he'll head to the line for a one-and-one. One. Second on Dockery, but they'll send a freshman to the line. Neitzel only been there 17 times all year, but right at 70%. Another one of those Mr. Basketball of Michigan. Tom Izzo has only missed one in the last seven years recruiting to his program. Utah and Kentucky will be next on this floor. And Nelson in the lineup for Duke. Neitzel with a one-on-one, -on -one, wearing a number that uh, is a very prideful number at Michigan State. Represents so much when you think of Mateen Cleaves and what he did for this university. Neitzel. Jim, Jim, we talked about ACC Big Ten. Seven to two in head-up matchups before the season. So you've got seven and two in the ACC Big Ten matchup, but tonight those two wins that Michigan State had in the preseason may be matched in one night with Wisconsin in control of NC State and Michigan State in control of Duke. It could be two for two in the same window. But Ewing says, hold on a minute. Inside, over the back on Anderson, and he picks up number four. But what's right on the floor right now for Duke? You've got Nelson and you have Shavlik Randolph out there who are not good free throw shooters. And that'll bring a freshman for Duke, 
to the line. Knights, all the freshmen got one of two for the Spartans. And let's see what Demarcus Nelson could do. You pointed out already tonight it's a struggle for him at the line. Yeah, you have Shavlik Randolph, who was up there just a minute ago at 55%. You've got Nelson at 53%. And they just uh, cannot get them to fall. Now you've got offense for defensive maneuvering. Shavlik Randolph will come out. That means Love will be on Davis. See if Tom Izzo goes inside against Love. We have the top two winningest active coaches in the NCAA tournament. Battling it out here with 2.10 to play. Second one goes for the freshman. Six-point game, 2.10 to play. Knights old pretty good low dribbler. Tough to take the ball away from. Dockery right down on him. Nice job by Neitzel. Occupied some time and didn't get it turned over. Timeout called. Tom Izzo wants to talk things over. 153 to play. 153. Can they knock out a number one seed? Johnson with the lead. Once again, Vern Lundquist and Bill Rafter. 348 to go in this one in regulation. 55-49. Timeouts remaining. Wisconsin has three left. North Carolina State two. Herb Sendak in his ninth season. And this is a North Carolina State team. State with the ball and the lead. You know, come Selection Sunday, Tom Izzo brought his team together. They were coming off that stinging loss in their first game of the Big Ten Tournament to Iowa. But he told his team that you are going to make a run, guys. I have never been so sure about anything in my life he told them on the night of the selection show when they came out as a five seed that got very little attention. Love, did he get the timeout? They grant it. Duke gets the takeaway and the timeout with 151. Huge play on that. Love anticipation right here and goes up and gets the time. Pressure in the backcourt. Timeout is called by Wisconsin. Bo Ryan comes out to chat with his group. 55-49 as uh, Chambliss was trapped in the backcourt. Nice little wrinkle there by State. Hadn't shown that all game. Duke trying to find a way to stay in this NCAA tournament, a team that in many minds has overperformed this season. You've called it a number of times, maybe Coach K's best oh, I, coaching I don't, effort. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Duke goes small. Basi basically, they have four guards on the floor with Melchioni. Now, Melchioni's the guy that I think is the dangerous shooter here for Duke. Davis is guarding him. Drive in, give up, and a foul as Melchioni now will go to the line. That was a good dish. Melchioni inside. And there you're going to have now Love will substitute to try to give Duke some size against Davis. He's going in for Melchioni. So Melchioni will be the offensive player. Love will be the defensive player. Davis with his third foul. Melchioni, eight points on the night, all in this half. Make it nine. Coach K talking about his team that won the ACC tournament. This team needed to win a championship because we'll be referring to this team the rest of our lives around Duke about what they did. This bunch that battled injuries and they battle back now. Only four down. They had been down as many as nine in this half. And that was the 15th ACC tournament championship for Mike Krzyzewski. Tying North Carolina. Small team out there defensively. And if you're Michigan State, you don't want to get too passive here. Take the ball to the basket. 18 on the shot clock, 125 in the game. And if you're Duke now, you do not want to foul. Particularly this guy, even though he missed big ones against Iowa. Anderson, turnaround jumper. Nope, dumps it inside. And a tie up. 
The arrow belongs to State. About five seconds on the shot clock here. Let's That's see. it. You don't reset. You don't penalize a defensive play. Don't you think Anderson probably should have shot that ball? I thought he was for sure. Yeah. He's wide open. Made an excellent move. Five seconds on the shot clock. Huge possession here for State. Looking for the inbound play. Ewing got a hand on it. Now but two three. more seconds elapse on the shot clock. Duke trying to D it up for three seconds. I'm surprised Duke doesn't come back and get Melchioni in the game now because you'd like to have your, your offensive team on the floor. Tommy Izzo wants to make a, a point here. He thought that maybe Ewing had possession, possession for long enough to be able to say you reset the 35. I didn't see it that way. No, I, I agree. But I, I thought that right now that Mike Krzyzewski would go ahead and get Melchioni on the floor, anticipating the fact that maybe they could get the turnover here and he'd want his offensive team out there. Pretty good play on the inside, but again, that was made because Anderson, who was wide open for the shot, didn't take it. Reggie Love has made a couple of he really gems has. on the defensive end. He was looking more like an old cornerback instead of a wide receiver. Well, what he's done here down the stretch, a few interceptions. Well, remember, now, watch this. Was yeah. this, watch how long did Ewing have control of it? I don't you think he ever had no, control. You can't say no. that was a change of possession. Now, Jim, when you start talking about Love, it was back in 01 when he played 21 games when Carlos, Carlos Boozer was out. And he was three for three in the NCAA tournament during that run. Obviously stepped aside because Casey Sanders uh, moved in there as the major replacement for Boozer. And he didn't get to play in that final four. They also could be contemplating adding another second to the shot clock. They point up to the shot clock, but it still is at three. Three seconds for State to get off a shot. I'd be watching for Brown or Aker going up towards that rim. It's Davis, turn around, bouncing around, and tipped around back to Davis. And Love, Love got a hand on him, and Davis back to the line. And there you had such a small team on the floor. Here, Melchioni is going to get to come into the ball game now on this foul. Davis had a good look, didn't he? Now Davis, a number of times following his own misses. He's got 12 rebounds tonight, uh, Billy. Coming off of 14 against Vermont, which was a career high just his last game. And one more now to bring it back to six. Seven offensive rebounds tonight. Melchioni on the floor. Well, there's been rebounding dominance and in the paint dominance by Michigan State in this ballgame. Free throw's not a problem for Davis. 105 and a two point or uh, two possession game here. Duke down six. Ewing, quick three. Rainbow three. Down and out. Tip. Oh, yes. Oh, what a wow. play Nelson. By Nelson. Boy, he had to arch way back to get his left hand on that one. 56 seconds in Austin. Michigan State 72, Duke 68. North Carolina State ball with one. 19 to go. Well, the trapping defense has set up the opportunity for this kind of a deflection. Great play by Etcher. You got your numbers. You got to love your teammates for filling and helping you out. Nice switch to the left by Hodge. Hodge with the layup on the fast break. And a uh, little mop-up duty required here. Bo Ryan's team trailed by 10 in the first half. Up by 10 in this half. And right now it's a five-point game with 119 to go. And Cameron Taylor in, another ball handler, and a good defender as well as they match up size-wise. You need the quick hitters now. And finally, Anzer <laughs> picks it up. A little cat and mouse there. <laughs> How Way deep. outside. A little smart shot. I don't know. I think you've got to make a pass and a cut. I mean, they've been able to dribble by it. they got the timeout again. Excellent, excellent dribble. Anderson. And Reggie Love reaches in on Brown. It'll be Brown to the line. Double bonus on each side the rest of the way. Two shots coming. And Jim, let me tell you, when you're going and spreading it out like Michigan State is, and you've got Anderson, the number one, as I mentioned earlier, the great free throw shooting team. Anderson, number one in the league. You've got Brown, number three in the league. You've got Torbert, who has filed out was number two in the league. 
And you have Agers, number five in the league. No matter where they spread the ball, they have a pretty good free throw shooter that can receive it. Two shots. And you can see why 84% on the season. Trannon in for Davis. Bogracus for Neitzel. And this team shoots 77% from the foul line, and it's well distributed. Two for two. Davis hits two in the last minute. Got to be thinking three. Where is Redick? He wants one from deep downtown. Then Brown hits two. It's Nelson. And that's all there. Uh, and Michigan State comes out with it. Under 30 to play. And why that ball didn't come back to Redick, there's Nelson making a freshman mistake. of you who have been watching Duke and Michigan State we've got one minute and five seconds remaining interesting ball game in that North Carolina State roared out to a 10-point lead in the first half some halftime oration by Bo Ryan of Wisconsin Wilkinson with his second free throw as Wisconsin jumped out with a 20 to 7 edge out of the gun they were up by 10, and right now we've got a six-point game. Wisconsin leads, 63 seconds to go. And a little teaching at halftime, too. I just trying to set up Etemar for that deep three. I think he's just got to go to the goal a little bit. Atzer misses. Ball tipped, and a foul is called. I think on Etemar. Let's see. Bager. Michigan State is going to be one game from St. Louis. Terrific job by Tom Izzo tonight, primarily on Reddick. The way he matched up his defensive players and used the versatility of so many guys about the same size to make life miserable for the All-American J.J. Reddick. The Chevrolet, most valuable players of the game, Paul Davis. Senior at the line. Okay, what a great job they've done covering the threes, Wisconsin, too, not giving them the open looks. I think you've got to go get the two quickly. And they're doing a good job pressing. They settle for that three. You don't make it. Puts the hammer in the opponent's hands. Lead is eight. 51 seconds to go. Winner gets either Villanova or North Carolina. They play next year. Wisconsin trying to knock out the 10 seed North Carolina State. There's the long three, and the rebound comes down as Cameron Taylor is popping. And Michigan State, with a timeout, has reached its largest lead of the night. Jim, they did a terrific job on perimeter. Ten-point lead there. Meanwhile, Wisconsin by 62-54, 39 seconds left in Syracuse. Vern Lundquist, Bill Raftery are there. Just under 40 seconds remaining. Wisconsin will go back to the free throw line as they have uh, outlasted and come from behind. They were down 30 to 21 at the break. Half. You know, State had opportunities to widen the lead in the first half. They didn't give some heart, some faith, some confidence to the opponent. And then a different, well-oiled offensive scheme by Bo Ryan's guys. They got reversing the basketball, got it to the box. You saw some good, quick moves by Tucker. Wilkinson as well, explosive with the bounce. I'm out. Michigan State by 10. We'll keep you advised of the action. Let's go back to Syracuse. This is a Wisconsin team that uh, defeated Northern Iowa, then Bucknell. Bucknell, a team that had defeated Kansas in the first round. As he shoots the free throw, I'm thinking as they, they salted that win over Bucknell with a series of free throws, somebody, as Morley was at the line, yelled, you're ruining a dream. <laughs> and Zach Morley said after the game, hey, it's our dream, too. <laughs> you don't want to share it. Uh, they just really struggled trying to make shots down the stretch. Senior Sharif Shambliss, who was a non-scholarship player this year. Clayton Hansen. Mike oh. Wilkinson with the period to the paragraph. Oh, punctuation. Send it in. Derry Farmer. Badgers are about to advance 65-54. North Carolina State's season will come to an end. And here, unimpeded, whoo, Benneman for two. How about that elevation? Final score.
Wisconsin a winner in Syracuse. Let's take you back to Austin as time runs down. Ten point lead for the Spartans. Jim and Billy. Michigan State is marching on one game from the final four. Duke is eliminated. Michigan State is in the Elite Eight, the second Big Ten team to make it to the Great Eight, and Wisconsin could be just a few minutes away from making it three from the Big Ten in the last eight. Duke is out. Michigan State's moving on. Greg Gumbel's coming up on the road to the Final Four. predictable tournament I don't think so welcome back to our studios everyone as we continue to travel the road to the final four here's what's coming up next this evening here on CBS Villanova and North Carolina the top seed in the Syracuse bracket those teams will tip at 10 6 Eastern time and then a minute later from Austin Utah will take on second seed Kentucky Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg and Seth Davis you know, these teams were these both of these games were pretty good coming down the stretch let's talk first about uh, the game in Syracuse between North Carolina State and Wisconsin well they trailed by nine at halftime did the Badgers but after this three by Sharif Chambliss it's a two-point lead for the Badgers their first since early in the game but the best player on the floor was Alondo Tucker for Wisconsin he ended up with 22 points three of them right there after the hoop and he knocked down the free throw. It's a six-point Badger lead. Then the quickness of Tucker allows him to get to the baseline. It's a 10-point lead then. But North Carolina State would not go away. Julius Hodge, who struggled only 4 of 16, puts his team to the game. Bill Raftery had a chance to talk with Wisconsin coach Bo Ryan and Alondo Tucker. Alondo, well, I, I know you'll tell me the truth. What did the coach have to say at halftime? You know, basically, you know, we played the worst, you know, basketball, Wisconsin basketball, you know, in the first half. And we came out, you know, and it showed that we played, we had to stick to our rules. You know, we had 20 minutes left, he said. You know, we had to come out here and show everybody and prove to everybody that Wisconsin can play. Did you think you had a case of nerves? I mean, I've never seen your team turn the ball over like that. Oh, yeah. That, that, you know, guys have to get some jitters out. You know, it's, a, you know, it's tough. You know, it's a tough crowd out here. You know, so it just took, you know, 20 minutes to get the jitters out, you know, but we can't come out there playing like that next game. Well, congratulations. Look forward to Sunday. Thanks a lot. Coach. Hey, you know what? His uh, feet were moving as fast as he was talking how in about, the first half. How, how about this comeback? Now, what did you say to these kids to, at halftime? To slow down. Like, like I said, Doe is very excited right now because he's real happy that we won, that we won. And sometimes when young men get into this, they get a little anxious. And those turnovers we had in the first half, I had to... I had to read the uniform again on the front and say, guys, at halftime here now, I'm not worried about me being embarrassed as a coach. I'm embarrassed for you guys. Now, this is not the way we play. Well, thanks. Congratulations. We'll see you Sunday. Thanks a lot. Looking forward to it. So the Wisconsin Badgers, a 65-56 winner over the Wolfpack of NC State, a team which led for much of the first half. Here come here on CBS, incidentally. We'll take a timeout and get back after this. <laughs> One of our games just completed out in Austin. The Michigan State Spartans advanced with a 10-point win over Duke, 78-68 a short while ago in Austin. Jim Nance with Coach Izzo and Paul Davis. All right, Greg, I'm here with Coach Izzo and Paul Davis, and you just said what a huge win for us. Tell me about this one. Well, I'm just happy for our guys. You know, they've been through a lot, and uh, we said all along we we're going to play this for them, and we played it for them, and uh, give our kids credit. We. We banged and we hustled and we worked hard and so did they. They got a very good team, Jim, as you know, but guys like this came through tonight. You know, Tom, really, when the brackets came out, you guys were a five seed in a very loaded bracket. A lot of people, I think, we talked about this yesterday at practice, overlooked your team and you told your team, I have never felt so sure about something in my whole life. We're going to make a run. What what told you that? Well, at the end of the year, we were playing better, Jimmy, and, and I, I think the Wisconsin win and then we battled through some things and I just felt confident. I liked the meetings we had at the end of the year and sure enough, we're, we're making a run, but we're not done yet. Hey, Paul, huge game. 
A lot of offensive rebounds, a double-double, your matchup with Sheldon Williams. Tell me about this team and how you guys were able to beat the number one seed.